Hello and welcome to Jonathan's Arrow, where we aim to shoot for the truth of the whole Word of God. In today's study, we are going to be looking into Proverbs chapter 21 and seeing exactly what God has for us there. But before we do, let us go to the Lord in prayer and prepare our hearts for this study today. Dear Lord, my God and my Redeemer, I want to thank you and praise you for this glorious and wonderful day that you have given me to breathe your breath and to live this life. Lord God, I pray and thank you for allowing me to be the minister of God that you have let me be. And I pray that that would continue mightily so in your blessed and holy will. Please, I beg of you to lead and guide in these studies and to give us of your wisdom and your understanding throughout any of these controversial or hard topics that we tackle in this or any chapters in the book of Proverbs or in the entirety of the Bible. I pray that you continue to be with us this day, Lord Jesus, as I pray these things in your precious, holy, and righteous name. Amen. All right, let us go and read all of Proverbs chapter 21. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord, as the rivers of water, he turneth it whithersoever he will. Every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord pondereth the hearts. To do justice and judgment is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. An high look and a proud heart, and the plowing of the wicked is sin. The thoughts of the diligent tend only to plenteousness, but of every one that is hasty only to want. The getting of treasures by a lying tongue is a vanity tossed to and fro of them that seek death. The robbery of the wicked shall destroy them, because they refuse to do judgment. The way of man is froward and strange, but as for the peer, his work is right. It is better to dwell in a corner of the housetop than with a brawling woman in a wide house. The soul of the wicked desireth evil, his neighbor findeth no favor in his eyes. When the scorner is punished, the simple is made wise, and when the wit wise is instructed, he receiveth knowledge. The righteous man wisely considereth the house of the wicked, but God overthroweth the wicked for their wickedness. Whoso stoppeth his ears at the cry of the poor, he also shall cry himself, but shall not be heard. A gift in secret pacifieth anger, and a reward in the bosom strong wrath. It is joy to the just to do judgment, but destruction shall be to the workers of iniquity. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. He that loveth pleasure shall be a poor man, he that loveth wine and oil shall not be rich. The wicked shall be a ransom for the righteous, and the transgressor for the upright. It is better to dwell in the wilderness than with a contentious and an angry woman. There is treasure to be desired, and oil in the dwelling of the wise, but a foolish man spendeth it up. He that followeth after righteousness and mercy findeth life, righteousness, and honor. A wise man scaleth the city of the mighty, and casteth down the strength of the confidence thereof. Whoso keepeth his mouth and his tongue keepeth his soul from troubles. Proud and haughty scorner is his name, who dealeth in proud wrath. The desire of the slothful killeth him, for his hands refuse to labor. He coveteth greedily all the day long, but the righteous giveth and spareth not. The sacrifice of the wicked is abomination. How much more when he bringeth it with a wicked mind? A false witness shall perish, but the man that heareth speaketh constantly. A wicked man hardeneth his face, but as for the upright, he directeth his way. There is no wisdom, nor understanding, nor counsel against the Lord. The horse is prepared against the day of battle, but safety is of the Lord. Going back to the very first verse of this chapter, let us go ahead and look at it. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord, as the rivers of water, he turneth it whithersoever he will. This is also one of those verses in the Bible that is misconstrued as a means to say, well, we don't really have a free will. You see, the rivers of water 
can you know do whatever you want. You can do whatever you please. But God directeth it. He he tries to stop the flow when it needs to stop, and he lets it go when it needs to go, or he overflows the river, or he blesses you or curses you, or he leads the river in certain ways that you were not expecting. The Lord directs rulers. And the reason why is because rulers, whether good or evil, are God's ministers. They are ministers that God uses to punish the wicked or to even punish those who are so-called righteous. A lot of the wickedness that has been legalized and allowed in America has been that way because we have forsaken God for vain religion. And that's the reason why a lot of Christians are having problems in America today. Now, our problems are pretty moot because the Bible says that we have not yet resisted unto blood. There are very many Christians all across this world who are resisting unto blood in many countries. And many of those countries are very commonplace. And we just don't hear about it because the media doesn't care about good people being harmed. The media only cares about bad people being quote-unquote harmed. So the fact of the matter is, is that God directs and uses ministers, good and evil, these rulers, so that he can control the outcomes of nations and, and really herd people into the understanding of what he wants. When people do wrong, he sends them a wicked ruler. When people do right, he sends them a good ruler. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, I pray and hope for the day that America repents repents and repents and gets back to the way of the Lord as we were founded for and starts having righteous rulers. Until then, we deserve all the judgments and punishments we currently have and more. Verse number two. Every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord pondereth the hearts. Only God's way is right. We oftentimes think our way is right, ha, but only God's way is right. Verse number three, to do justice and judgment is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. The only sacrifice that matters is the cross. Do judgment and justice. That's what God wants us to do today. There is no sacrifice you can offer to God that is a blessing. That's why folks who go to church and think they have a tithe and attendance righteousness and a tithe and attendance salvation are really just trampling underfoot the Son of God. They are committing the worst blasphemy you can think of to think that they're going to church and they're giving money to the church is what causes them to be righteous. It is the cross of Christ and his sacrifice and our believing in him and in that sacrifice that causes us to be righteous walking in his way, doing right justice and good judgment. That is what causes us to be righteous. An high look and a proud heart and the plowing of the wicked is sin. In verse number four, everything the wicked do, everything that the wicked does, everything that they do in life is sin. Regardless, it does not matter how much you do not believe this. Even the so-called good things a wicked person can do is sin. Anything you do without God, you are doing in vain. You are va committing vanity. Vanity is sin. Therefore, even if you give to charities, you give to the poor, you give to the homeless, you help folk, if you are wicked and unsaved, your life is sin. Verse number five. The thoughts of the diligent tend only to plenteousness but of every one that is hasty only to want. You reap what you sow. If you reap bountifully, it is because you have sown bountifully. And if you reap sparingly, it is because you have sown sparingly. So the thoughts of the diligent tend only to plenteousness. They constantly work. They are constantly diligent about their work. Therefore, everything they have is plenty, plenty and plenty and plenty, everything. So therefore, their thoughts tend only to plenteousness. But of everyone that is hasty only to want, all their thoughts are lack and desire because they don't have anything. Verse number six. The getting of treasures by a lying tongue is a vanity tossed to and fro of them that seek death. Greed will destroy you. 
Greed will destroy you, and especially if that greed and all those material possessions, that mammon that you have attained, has not only been received through your love of it, but also through your lying to get it, your deceitfulness. It will destroy you. Verse number 7. The robbery of the wicked shall destroy them, because they refuse to do judgment. Refusal to do judgment will destroy you as well. Everybody who is refusing to do judgment and justice according to the word of the Lord is wicked, and that will come around and destroy them. Verse number 8. The way of man is froward and strange, but as for the peer, his work is right. Discernment. This is simple discernment, and that's all God is talking about here. The way of a man is froward and strange. Well, if you see a man who is froward and strange, he is not peer, because the peer, their work is right. Verse number nine. It is better to dwell in a corner of the housetop than with a brawling woman in a wide house. This verse is saying that it is better to have little without a wicked wife than to have much with a wicked wife. Unfortunately, uh, a lot of folks don't follow this today, including Christians, and it's really much of a shame. This is vice versa as well. You choose whom you marry. And if you choose to marry a wicked man, women out there, and if you choose to marry a wicked woman, men out there, I'm talking to you, you will reap what you sow. The Bible is saying that it is better to dwell in a corner of the housetop than with a brawling woman in a wide house. This isn't saying go and live in the corner of your housetop rather than be downstairs with your wife. No, this is talking about having nothing, having a little corner to yourself, a little tiny sp space of living rather than having a giant space with wickedness. Have righteousness even if it means you have little because that's better. God is, speaks some pretty damning things in the book of Proverbs about wicked wives and wicked women. And it is my humble opinion that the reason why he directs so much about this is because of what is going on in the world today. And we'll definitely see that in the book of Proverbs chapter 30 and 31. But right here, God is just telling us that it is better to dwell with righteousness and have little than to dwell with wickedness and have much. I'd be careful. I'd be very careful. Because once you make that decision to marry someone who is no good, you will be accountable to that man, to that man if you are a woman. And you will be accountable to that woman if you are a man. You will be accountable to your spouse. You have to protect them and you have to do for them according to what the Bible says. Men must lead and guide their wives and their families, and women must obey and nurture and give grace unto her husband and her families. Amen. Verse number 10. The soul of the wicked desireth evil. His neighbor findeth no favor in his eyes. Sinners, wicked folk, help no one and have no desire to have help for anyone. The soul of the wicked, they desire evil. That's all they desire in their life. They desire to commit evil unto others and to commit evil in their own lives. His neighbor findeth no favor in his eyes. His neighbor cannot find favor, favor in his eyes because his neighbor wants nothing to do with doing good unto his neighbor. The wicked don't want to do good unto their neighbors. It's simple. It's simple. All you have to do is look into the modern world and see it. All you have to do is look into the modern world and you can see this. It's amazing how much the Bible speaks of us when it was written thousands of years ago. Thousands of years ago. And yet people still do not believe. Verse number 11. When the scorner is punished, the simple is made wise. And when the wise is instructed, he receiveth knowledge. Making good examples, either through punishment or, or righteousness or good reward or bad reward... That will help folks to learn. We must make examples of the wicked. We must punish them so that other folks think twice about being wicked. And we must give them a just and right, correct punishment that suits the crime. 
but also we must reward properly in order to incentivize people to do right. Verse number 12. The righteous man wisely considereth the house of the wicked, but God overthroweth the wicked for their wickedness. Righteous folk refuse to emulate the wicked. They see the wicked in their, in their homes and in their dwelling places, in their environments. You see these wicked folk being swarmed with evil in their life, and you say, you know what, I'm going to wisely consider this, and I'm not going to be like them. Righteous folk do that. Wicked folk emulate. Wicked folk do whatever they please. Wicked folk see another person doing even more evil than themselves, and they go, oh, I want to top that. I want to do that. Yeah. Wicked folk never stop because sin is a disease, a cancer that never ends. It consumes and consumes and consumes until it has killed and destroyed everything it possibly can. Verse number 13. Whoso stoppeth his ears at the cry of the poor, he also shall cry himself, but shall not be heard. Refuse to help the poor, and you will be refused when you ask for help. That is the reality of life, and that is what God is going to treat you with. You refuse to help those who cry for your help, and he will refuse to help you when you cry for help. Verse number 14. A gift in secret pacifieth anger, and a reward in the bosom strong wrath. This is talking about being quiet about disputes. A gift in secret pacifieth anger, and a reward in the bosom strong wrath. God wants us to go to people we have harmed and we have done wrong, and apologize to them in person, help them and do for them good, and give them gifts and say, look, you know, forgive me, I'm sorry what I did, in secret. Take all of your dealings like this in secret. You do not need to make it public. Nobody needs to know what you have done. Keep it between you and the person you have harmed, you have wronged. Verse number 15. It is joy to the just to do judgment, but destruction shall be to the workers of iniquity. This is a verse of discernment. Why? Well, because it is joy to the just to do judgment. There is no wicked folk in this world who is joyous about doing right judgment. None. None at all. So the fact of the matter is, is that when you see folks who hate judgment, who think that it's wrong to judge and it's wrong to do right, you can automatically understand that they are workers of iniquity, and sh destruction shall come to them. Verse number 16. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. You will go nowhere without God's way in your life. Nowhere. And in fact, you're going to remain in that nowhere until you come back to the Lord. Verse number 17. He that loveth pleasure shall be a poor man. He that loveth wine and oil shall be rich. If entertainment is your life and that's all you love, you shall be poor. Amen. Be careful what you love and lift up in your life. It will consume you. Verse number 18. The wicked shall be a ransom for the righteous and the transgressor for the upright. The wicked shall oftentimes find themselves suffering in the stead of the righteous. The righteous will be saved out of a situation and the, the wicked shall be inserted into it so that they can suffer rather. Uh, this is not something that is wished upon anybody, but this is just the reality of it. God gives us reality. He doesn't give, the, give us fantasy. He doesn't give us make-believe. This is reality. You do wrong in your life, and you will come in the place of the righteous, and you will suffer in their place. Verse number 19. It is better to dwell in the wilderness than with a contentious and an angry woman. This is an exaggeration of a few verses back. God is saying this to insert the fact that this is even more important than we first thought. It is better to have nothing than a wicked life with a wicked wife. And true vice versa. There would be many women out there who marry wicked husbands, and then they regret it. Then they want a divorce. Then they want these things. And guess what? They're not justified. You're not justified divorcing your spouse for any reason outside of fornication. 
your spouse commits fornication, you are justified by the Lord's lips. He says that. But if he's not treating you any good, if she's not treating you any good, you've made your bed now, you must lay in it. I'm sorry for you. That's the truth of the matter. Verse number 20. There is treasure to be desired, and oil in the dwelling of the wise. But a foolish man spendeth it up. Wise men save their riches. Wise men have savings accounts. Wow. The Bible talking to us well over a thousand years before Christ was born. Telling us, save your money. Save your wares. You may need it. But foolish folks spend it up. They don't save anything. They just go about getting into trouble, spending all their money when they have the money, and then when they don't have money, they go to their friends and their neighbors and, and people and beg and plead, oh, I don't have money to pay my bills, don't have money to buy food. Tough. Should have saved. Verse number 21. He that followeth after righteousness and mercy findeth life, righteousness, and honor. You reap what you sow. And interestingly enough, not only do you reap what you sow, God always gives you more than what you give him. He always blesses you with more than what you give him. He that followeth after righteousness and mercy, that's two things, findeth life, righteousness, and honor. That's three things. God blesses you more than you give to him, but you have to give to him. You have to do justice. You have to do judgment. You have to follow his way before he can ever give to you. You must be saved. You must be born again before you can become a child of the king. Verse number 22. A wise man scaleth the city of the mighty and casteth down the strength of the confidence thereof. Verse number 22 is telling us that wisdom is better than physical strength. The Bible tells us that bodily exercise profiteth little, but it still profiteth. You still need physical exercise. You still need physical strength. However, a wise man can defeat any amount of strong men if those strong men are not wise because wisdom can triumph over strength. And that's exactly what this is talking about here. Verse number 23. Whoso keepeth his mouth and his tongue keepeth his soul from troubles. Watch your words and watch what you say and watch what you do. Watch your tongue and keep yourself from saying unnecessary things. You can get into an awful lot of trouble by letting that mouth say what you think should be said rather than what should actually be said, which oftentimes is nothing. Keep your mouth shut. Be prudent. Be humble. Verse number 24. Proud and haughty scorner is his name, who dealeth in proud wrath. You are your sins. God does not separate you from your sins in the Bible ever, not Old or New Testament. If you lie, you are a liar. You're not a man who, who has lied. You are a liar. If you steal, you're not a man who steals. You're a thief. If you murder, you're not a man who murders. You are a murderer. If you commit abominations, you are not a man who commits abominations. You are an abomination. God does not separate sinners from their sin. It is only until you are saved by the precious holy blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and his sacrifice that he gave on the cross. It is only when you are made a child of the king, born again unto him, that you lose the understanding of being represented by your sin. Instead, you are represented by Jesus. None of us are sinless, even those of us who are saved. But all of us who are saved are made perfect by the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. And by that sacrifice, we are no longer known by our sin. Until you are saved, you are your sins. Verse number 25. The desire of the slothful killeth him, for his hands refuse to labor. And, verse number 26, He coveteth greedily all the day long, but the righteous giveth and spareth not. Verses 25 and 26 tell us that the lazy have nothing, and righteous folk are able to give and give and give and give more abundantly. That's just the reality of life. Lazy folk are not blessed. 
Slothful folk are not blessed. Gluttons and drunkards are not blessed. But righteous folk are blessed, blessed so much that they're capable of giving and sparing not. Verse number 27. The sacrifice of the wicked is abomination. How much more when he bringeth it with a wicked mind? Now we've gone over these many times before already in the book of Proverbs. Everything that the wicked do is abomination to God. Everything that the wicked do is sin, no matter what they do. Even their religion is vain sin to God. But, it's, but then it says, how much more when he bringeth it with a wicked mind? A wicked mind believes God can be sated by wicked folk and by the sacrifice of wicked folk. A wicked mind believes that God will accept your sacrifice rather than Jesus. Hmm, interesting. Many folk do that today with their vain religion. They think that their works can save them rather than believing in Jesus. Or that believing in Jesus is only enough for the beginning of the salvation. After that, you must continue to work for your salvation. I'm sorry, but you are making void the cross of Christ when you think that your own works save you or keep you saved. They keep you righteous, friend. They keep you honest. They keep you good when you do works for the Lord. That's all they do. Your salvation is never in question once you have it. Verse number 28. A false witness shall perish, but the man that heareth speaketh constantly. Right witness will be heard. That's all this is talking about here. A false witness shall perish. His witness shall die with him. But the man that heareth, the man that heareth the situation and these problems, and he knows the, truth, the truth about the situation, he will speak constantly. He will make sure that the truth is known, and it will be heard. Verse number 29. A wicked man hardeneth his face, but as for the upright, he directeth his way. The wicked will not listen to God, whereas the righteous will allow God to direct their way. That's it. That's all this is talking about here. It's pretty simple, pretty easy. And it's another verse of discernment. And verses 30 through 31. There is no wisdom, nor understanding, nor counsel against the Lord. The horse is prepared against the day of battle, but safety is of the Lord. Only by the Lord shall we prevail. Only by the Lord do we have safety. Only by the Lord do we have counsel or wisdom or understanding, because there is nothing that can stand against God. There is no wisdom, there is no counsel, there is no understanding that can stand against God. And regardless of whatever you have, the horse may be prepared for the day of battle, but safety is of the Lord. Now, many folks, many Christians today will tell you that you as a, an American Christian or a Christian regardless should not have any means to protect yourself. Like, for instance, in America, we have a right to have a firearm. We have a right to keep and bear arms, our Second Amendment to the Constitution Bill of Rights. Many Christians will tell you, oh, I don't carry a gun. I don't carry a gun because God's going to come down here. He's going to slap his knee and he's going to protect me. Uh, I'm sorry to tell you, that's just not how things work, friend. God wants us to be prepared for the day of battle. But safety is of him. We must trust in him. You see, interestingly enough, when you go back and look into the Old Testament and you see in Nehemiah chapter 4, this is a wonderful place to look at. Nehemiah chapter 4 tells us that the men of God, the men at that time, all were preparing and doing the work of the Lord and uh, repairing the wall of Jerusalem all around while they kept their weapons in their hands. Why didn't they just sit around and say, Lord, you cast lightning bolts and strike our enemies dead when they come to attack us? Why didn't they just say that if it was that simple? It's not that simple. In fact, it's even more simple than that. We're supposed to be prepared. We are supposed to have the means to protect one another, protect ourselves, protect our families, protect our loved ones, and protect the innocent. Not just leave it to random chance or to say, oh, well, God will protect us. There are many people who get raped. There are many people who get killed. There are many people who are robbed from or stolen or people who are trafficked or hurt or injured or assaulted. Why didn't God just strike their enemies? Many righteous folk are found in those situations. Why doesn't God just strike them, those enemies of these folks who are being harmed unrighteously? Why doesn't God just strike them? 
because it is our job and it is our right to commit justice and judgment and to protect the poor and needy, to protect the fatherless, protect the widow, and protect ourselves and our families. It is our job to do so, relying on God. Carefully consider what you are told and what you are told to believe, because not everything that folks tell you today, even behind the pulpit, is true. And we'll see that even more so very soon. God requires us to protect the innocent. He requires us to do judgment and justice, and refusal to do it will destroy you. The Lord has a mighty plan, and if we trust in him and his plan by his word and his word alone, we will never be steered wrong. Follow him in all you do and forsake the world's wisdom, forsake the world's foolishness, and forsake the way of mankind today, because all it is doing is bringing sudden destruction, fear, and calamity. I want to thank you for joining me today as we looked into Proverbs chapter 21. And I do hope you'll join me next time for our study in Proverbs chapter 22. But until then, if you did find this informative and and pleasant, I would ask you that you'd like, subscribe, and share with all those who might love and enjoy this word as well. But until next time, pray you have a blessed day.